A few years ago, Mr. Sensible, who is a fantastic debunker, sent a balloon up to around 40 kilometers above the surface and in doing so recorded the curvature of the Earth. It was a fantastic project and he followed it up with a second one which was also just as successful. However, Carl Adams, a flat earther, wants to have his say on Mr. Sensible's project. And I bet you can guess what he's going to say. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, on with today's video and Carl Adams' review of Mr. Sensible's MAGE project. MAGE standing for Mission Above Globe Earth. I'm very interested to see what Carl has to say on this one. Let's have a look. Take it away, Carl. Recently, an anti-flat earther by the name of Mr. Sensible launched his very own balloon satellite in an effort to try and prove that the Earth was a globe. We sent up a payload with a non-distorting camera and took that imagery, and it looks like it's curved. Those are facts. If you can dispute them, you're welcome to. Needless to say, he feels like pretty hot stuff right now and has contacted me personally wanting to hear what I think of it all. Well, that was a few years ago, so if it's taken you this long to come up with a flimsy response, then that says a lot to me. But let's give you a chance. My first question for him is why the term MAGE? I understand it is an acronym for Mission Above Globe Earth, but it still sounds like his making it say MAGE is not coincidental. But you've just said you've understood it's an acronym. Yeah, he probably played around with different variations to make sure it sounded good, but that's all he would have done. When I think of MAGES, I think of wizards, magicians, and magic tricks. The dictionary definition of MAGE is a magician, after all. So I've got to wonder, is this all his idea of a magic trick? The video footage is there for all to see, Carl. There are no tricks. Let's review the footage. I'm Mr. Sensible, and I recently did a high altitude balloon launch, reaching a height of 38,736 meters. This video is the full and uncut film from the main camera from launch up to burst point, down to landing, and through to recovery. And I want to make clear, there are no cuts in this. Please check out the links in the description below, or have a look at my playlist to see my other videos in the MAGE series, including MAGE final results, which detail the experiment and how it turned out. Which we all know was as debilitating to the flat earth as the final experiment was. Mr. Sensible's project should have had way more rise on it. This also shows the footage of the balloon burst. It's absolutely stunning, and I replay it in slow motion. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. It's much appreciated. I'll show details now of the specs of the Mage probe, and then we'll get straight onto the launch. Thank you. Enjoy. All right, so here we can see that the non-distorting lens he was referring to before was this narrow angle lens. Indeed, this lens has a 90 degree field of view and as such has very limited distortion on it. So no curves can be created like they can be with the fisheye lenses. I will say this, he has my respect for actually getting out and testing things for himself. This is what I like to see. Too many people these days found their beliefs on hearsay and whatever unnamed scientists say rather than scientifically founding their beliefs in observation and experimentation. Yes, but the problem is, even when we do stuff like this, it's still disputed. The final experiment is a perfect example of this. Okay, so here's what we are looking at. We have the main camera with the narrow angle lens, which is our big picture. We have the balloon camera in the top left, and then next to that we have the wide angle camera, allowing us something to compare our footage with. On the right here, we have an altitude meter showing us how high the balloon is. And across the center, we have two horizontal lines. As I understand, the lines are there to show us the sweet spot on the camera lens where the least amount of barrel distortion takes place. 
except there'd be no barrel distortion at all in the center of the image, none. And in fact, for the human eye to pick up barrel distortion in a 90 degree lens would be incredibly difficult. So if I'm not mistaken, these horizontal lines serve as acknowledgement that what he was saying about using a non-distorted lens wasn't entirely true. It is still distorted due to barrel distortion, but it's not as distorted as the wide angle lens. Herein, in barrel distortion, you'll notice that these lines across the center get distorted the least, which is what the bars across his main camera are for. With that understanding, we'll keep our observations within those two bars. And remember, if you look across the center of that image, there will be none. That's the key here. Okay, so let's examine this shot with the horizon in the sweet spot taken from 3,300 meters. Here I have taken a straight line across the horizon, and it looks pretty flat. Let's take another shot from a higher altitude and see if that changes. Yeah, at 3,300 meters, the curve is going to be very hard to see. That is for sure. Ooh, just a little over 11,000 meters now. Let's put a straight line across that. All right, so as I drag the line across the horizon, I see that the atmospheric gradient is so strong it is difficult to see where I should put the other end of the line. Let's adjust the brightness and contrast of this picture to see if that can't sharpen the image and make things easier. I don't even have to draw a straight line across this. I fully acknowledge that I can see some curvature. Well, I was not expecting that. There's got to be a buck coming, isn't there? Now my question is, is this the curvature of the Earth that we are looking at? I would have thought that was obvious, Kyle. It's not the curve of a banana, is it? Well, what I'm going to look for now is if this is the curvature of the Earth that we are looking at, I expect it to have about the same amount of curvature all the way across. If the right side curves faster than the left side, that is where we're going to bump into some problems. Let's do MC Tune's Scrunched Horizon trick to check out the curvature of this. All right, here I'm going to go ahead and select all of that, and then we're going to scrunch it really quick. Select. And scrunch. £100 that he's not going to acknowledge that his line wasn't perfectly horizontal. Yeah, that right side definitely doesn't have the same amount of curvature as the left side does. And what happens if you rotate it so that your line is horizontal? Oh look, roughly the same amount of curve each side. Whoopsies! And another interesting thing to observe is the center of our curve isn't the center of our photo. I wonder why that is. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because the moment the screen grab was taken, the camera wasn't perfectly horizontal. Maybe. Let's try this again at just over 15,000 meters. Okay, let's adjust that brightness and contrast. And we'll check to see if our line is where it's supposed to be. Okay. I do see some curvature there. Let's go ahead and scrunch that and do our scrunch horizon trick. Look for the same thing. Scrunch. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Yes, it's still not straight, which means the curve is going to be more pronounced on one side. We don't see the same amount of curvature as we did in the last picture. That right side looks a lot flatter than it used to. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. You scrunched the first photo more than you did for the second photo. Look, here they are side by side. The more you scrunch, the more curve you will see. Your scrunching game is not on point, Kyle. All right, let's go even higher. 25,000 meters. Will it get flatter or will it get more curved? All right, 
Brightness and contrast. Let's just skip to the bit where he scrunches it again. Scrunched horizon part. Scrunch. Hmm. I think it's interesting how Mr. Sensible is 100% convinced that this proves the Earth is a globe. What are you even doing, Kyle? This time you only scrunched two thirds of the image. Listen, it's funny to me that you're not looking at the really high footage at 38 kilometers, Kyle. And when you watch Mr. Sensible's review of it, you actually cannot deny that the Earth's curve is visible. Have a look at this. Now this drop dead gorgeous image is at 35,160 odd meters. It is stunning. There is no doubt that there is curve there. That horizon line is across the middle of the field of view. So barrel distortion up or down is not going to be taking effect. That is a smoking gun. But let's have a look at it compressed. And I'll add a horizontal yellow line again for completeness. Oh look, we done got curve. Well, there we go. What a wonderful way to finish this video. Kyle, sort your scrunch game out, please, and be a little bit more intellectually honest. Because anyone that looks at this properly can see that the Earth's curve is there quite nicely. Well, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday all wrapped up. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of Kyle's review there of Mr. Sensible's Mage Project video. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. As always, it's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. That would be very much appreciated. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then. Bye bye.